So, yes, indeed, it has been a hot one here in Georgia. Um, we've been hitting those 96, 97, 98 degree days. And I'm sure some of you around the country are playing violins right now because you're well over the hundreds. Um, but for here in Georgia, it's pretty hot. And when you mix that with the humidity, it makes it unbearable. Definitely an AC is needed. Um, so the pedestal is done. It's time to put the AC into the cargo trailer and try to get some sort of semblance of some cool going on uh, just to make it bearable to work inside of it because with the dark skin on it, of course, and the sun beating down, it is absolutely a hot box inside of there. So uh, we're going to go right into it and get started. And unfortunately, there was also a huge mistake in here, which you'll see as well. So let's do it. So the first thing I did was cut a hole in the front of the trailer. That was pretty nerve wracking and put in this 12 by 12 louvered aluminum vent and screwed it onto the aluminum skin of the trailer around the edges. I'd use some black butyl tape just to seal it off from any kind of rain. So the basic design here is for the rear of the AC to sit back here towards the louver and it's exhausting the hot air that's blown over the coils out the front through the larger vent. With the AC sitting in there, it'll actually pull the fresh air from the side of the trailer and then, of course, right out the back. So that's the reason for the divider is to keep the uh, sides from pulling in any of the exhaust, the hot exhaust air that's going out the front. Needless to say, I then had to cut another hole into the side of the trailer. Now, to say nerve-wracking, it is very nerve-wracking starting to cut holes into a brand new cargo trailer. Uh, the only thing I can say about that is, and I didn't record me actually cutting it out, there are plenty of videos out there on how to butcher up your cargo trailer. My biggest suggestion on this would be to make sure that you measure at least three times before you start cutting. You can always remove a little bit of extra, but you can't put back a little bit too much. So just measure very, very well, very carefully, and mark it out and make sure it's level uh, as it fits to the trailer. And just take your time because if you make a mistake, you're kind of SOL unless you know how to rework metal. And that's just a real pain in the butt. So, yeah, I didn't record me cursing and jumping up and down and just freaking the hell out because I was literally cutting holes into the side of my trailer. But I did do it successfully. Now, the vents that you saw that I put in there, the front one is 12 by 12, as I said. And then the one on the side for the fresh air intake is an 8 by 8. Both of these you can find on Amazon just by looking up louvered vent. They are 100% aluminum, and then all around the edges, I sealed it up with butyl tape before actually screwing it onto the aluminum. Okay, back to it. The hot air exhaust that comes out of the back of the AC needs to be directed towards that vent. You don't want it just billowing around in a large cavity like that. You're not going to get a lot of good airflow. So you need to create some sort of a dam. Uh, which will help force that air to where it needs to go out. And all I used was some extra one inch XPS foam that I had from insulating and just cut the proper angles for the top and then used a piece here, a little rectangle piece in order to firm up the sides. With the air dam in place, this should help direct the air out the front here and keep it from swooshing around there in a big cavity. Uh, with the piece on top of there, I'm just dry fitting it to make sure that everything fits. And originally, I was going to glue this into place or perhaps just use some sort of uh, epoxy in order to place it in there. But I'm glad I didn't because this actually came back to haunt me. So what I wound up doing uh, in the spur of the moment was just using some foil tape to secure it. And I just went around all the edges in order to make sure... Uh, that it was sealed up pretty tight. I also installed some cleats in order to keep the AC from uh, moving forward or backward while the trailer's in transit. And it was a great idea. However, uh, I had to pull it all out. So yeah, in theory, this worked perfectly. The air dam directs the exhaust air right out the front. The divider there keeps the incoming air away from the outgoing air with uh, great success, as you can see there. So no problems. And on the front, I will eventually put in a solid board, uh, but for testing purposes, I just used a piece of XPS to block off the front so that the uh, air intake is separate from just pulling it from out of the trailer. So this worked for the day, but 
there are some pretty serious issues that I didn't count on. So I know what you're thinking. You forgot to put in a drain line, which I did. However, I didn't put it in on purpose because of the type of AC I had. So on the truck camper build, I used a 5000 BTU GE. It has the same design as the Toshiba that I'm using now with one little difference, which I'll cover in just a minute. But basically, these are high efficiency window units. They're designed to collect a little bit of moisture in the bottom of the pan. There's a slinger ring on the inside that actually will take that water up and blow it against the condenser coils in order to help cool them down. This is what makes them high efficiency. Now on the truck camper, I wasn't worried about a drain line because it's blowing the water out when you're using it. Now there may be a little bit that's left over in the bottom of the pan when it's shut down from condensation, etc. But I never had a problem with it coming back into the camper. Now this is surprising because if you remember in the truck camper, the exhaust vent was on the very front of it, which is basically a brick wall going down the highway. But for some reason, with the cargo trailer, when I would transport it from my house back to the drop yard uh, during the weekdays, the air would blow th up through the exhaust vent and push the water out of the AC unit into the trailer. So I have to put a drain in. Now, the Toshiba doesn't have anywhere to put a drain. It's designed not to be able to let it leak out. So, unfortunately, I had to return the Toshiba and then had to buy a GE. Now, they did not have another 5,000 BTU unit in stock. They only had a 6,000 BTU. So, I had to buy that one. Now, that's great in theory because the 6,000 BTU means a little extra cooling. Um, however, the dimensions were ever so slightly larger than what the 5,000 BTUs were. So, yeah, I had to rip everything back out again. So it's still kind of the same concepts, kind of the same design. Let me pull that out there. The uh, box I had to enlarge a little bit. Um, it was originally like right to here. So I actually had to push it back uh, because of the depth of the new AC and then had to take out the uh, stops that were here that were holding up the wood uh, piece of it. So now we're back to all foam. Uh, in order to seal the back of it for the exhaust and then I had to come out a little bit because of the depth uh, coming out more forward to the front. The new AC again is just slightly larger uh, both in depth width and height so I had to and it, it wasn't by much it was like literally by a quarter inch uh, on one dimension and about half an inch on the other dimension but I wound up having to redo everything. So on this unit, the drain hole is right there, which I've measured out in order to put the, uh, a hole to, you know, put a, a piece of tubing here uh, to go up. Now the problem is uh, it's 10 millimeters, which that's not so much of a problem, but then trying to find a way to secure the hose uh, in there and you can't go all the way up with it you know it's got to be a little bit down or right there so I'm thinking of like a ferrule or something along those lines but the pan is not that deep it's a very 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 shallow pan um, so it's not holding a whole lot of water to begin with but how do I get that to properly drain okay so I think I figured it out um, this is actually the plug that uh, goes underneath the drain there and it fits up in there like so, clamps on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is drill out this hole through the opposite side of it. And then this will be up underneath on, between the wood and the um, actual air conditioner and this fits nice and snugly just whoops not that snugly apparently it fits nice and snugly right here into the top and then the tube itself will be just fitted right to the end of that and then ran out the bottom
Now, the one great thing about DIY is you can make mistakes and try again and try again and try again. The drain, as I showed earlier, does work. It works pretty effectively. It does allow water to drain out. However, I'm not thrilled with that cup design, and I've actually ordered a drain from Amazon to see if I can make it work. So there'll be more updates on that later as we go through the series. But for right now, I've got AC, and it blows nice and cold into the trailer, and it staves off those 98-degree days. So, yeah, works perfectly. Of course, you see I got the front cover on it there. Uh, that will all be attached right now. It's a little jagged and off-centered. Uh, it's just because I don't have the top screwed down. But that will all change. Stay tuned.